Hi, everyone. I'm Lynn Allen, and this is Five Minutes into the Future. And today we'll be taking a quick dive into next gen CAD technology and the role that it's going to play in the future of design and engineering. Comprised of technologies like 3D printing and automation and machine learning and AI and, and generative design, which is my favorite, the future of computer aided design has so much potential. It offers never before innovation possibilities for designers and engineers and, and manufacturers as well. And in fact, Forrester tells us that these technologies have been able to help companies shorten the cycle time for structure solution design by as much as 70%. So the future looks bright for users of these evolving technologies if you embrace them. And our guests are here to offer the insights and perspectives into this very exciting field. So here today is Paul Miller from Forrester and Scott Harms from Metal Quest Unlimited. Thank you both for joining us today. Paul, those who are watching you may have a they may have a pretty solid grasp of the concepts surrounding CAD software. But tell us what it means to fully utilize these next gen tools to completely revolutionize one's design and engineering processes. Hi, Lynn, again. And it sounds like a game of buzzword bingo, doesn't it? CAD, generative design, additive manufacturing, CAD, you know, the, the, the list of funny terms goes on and on. But we've come a very long way since the days when CAD was just used in isolation to design a product on a computer screen. Now we connect CAD to every step of the process. We can we control the milling machines, we control the 3D printers that take those design files and actually then produce the finished part. And then when you add in machine learning, things get even more interesting. We use techniques like generative design to work through a set of possible design options. A human might try half a dozen different designs and pick the, their favorite. A computer can simulate hundreds, thousands, even millions of combinations. And we can set constraints that the computer will obey to the letter. We can tell it to find the cheapest design, the lightest design, the strongest design, and try again and again and again until it reaches the right combination of requirements. And sometimes these designs look weird, frankly. They look almost organic and nothing like what a human designer would have come up with. But they're the best way to meet the requirements. And then we use machine learning to test those designs, to understand how they're going to perform aerodynamically or in different temperature constraints, or to understand how noisy that engine might be in operation. So there are all these different ways that CAD is being combined with the other terms in our buzzword bingo game to deliver real value in design and then operation of the product. So much more than CAD used to be, right? So much more. Okay, so, so Scott, what can you tell us about the way that you're actually using these next generation CAD technology tools within the Metal Quest Unlimited? And where do you see these technologies moving forward? Well, we approach things um, from a you know technology platform first and foremost, and I, I say that all the way through the manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So we get the solid models, uh, you know, as much CAD information as we possibly can from the customer, and then we immediately go to work. Whether that's designing fixturing, whether that's designing robotics, you know, it, it, the entire platform that we go about manufacturing these particular parts starts with that you know CAD solid model or something up front. You know, it, it makes us so much more rapid in terms of, you know, when we go out on the shop floor to actually produce something, you know, it's been tried, it's been, you know, looked at from 50 different angles. You know, you, you can manipulate the CAD system so much more effortlessly than you can, you know, cutting metal or stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's a tremendous tool. And the thing that's, that's so impressive, the vendors, you know, that we use, they've all embraced this as well. So for instance, whether it's robotics, it's so easy to get solid models for robots. You know, you lay out a site, you know, with all the different aspects of this robotic cell, whether it's your end effectors, you know, the, the automation aspects from the proximity sensors all the way to the pneumatic valves. You know, you go to each one of these respective vendors, you find these solid models and you literally build a virtual playground, you know, with, you know, the, the robot and this one solid model that you may have got from your customer in the very beginning. And next thing you know, you truly have a virtual world um, that is ready to be just turned loose. Virtual playground. I like that. Virtual playground. 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Scott, for those thoughts. I mean, it's it's great to see these technologies in practice. And thank you also, Paul, for your insights. And thank you all for watching this entry into our series. Join us next time as we venture five minutes into the future. Thank you.